Okay, now I'm recording. So this lecture and all future lectures will be posted on YouTube uh, under my own uh, account, which says uh, Mark Wilson's SRJC Art History Lectures. And then you can look up the individual lecture from whichever class you might want to review or, or if you miss a class. You can see that by 7 p.m. I will send you another email to remind you of this as well. By 7 p.m. on the Friday of each week for that lecture, and they'll stay up all semester. So uh, that is one advantage of Zoom. And another is the tests. I think most of you've noticed, if you, I assume most of you, uh, I, I would guess, have taken Zoom classes at Santa Rosa or any other college. And you notice there's, there's no question this, all the exams are open book. <laughs> Uh, during this period of, uh, you know, odd interlude we all have where we can't meet in person for teaching purposes. Um, but the good news for you as students is, of course, you can refer to your notes as much as you want. And the other good news about the test is that I leave the test up for at least 48 hours on YouTube. Then I do delete them. The midterm, there's just two tests, the midterm and the final. And when those are up, for well over 48 hours, it's, it's going to be until the Saturday after the test for each of those two weeks of the exams. Uh, there again, you'll have time to go back and, and, you know, look at the notes or at the videos for that, the questions that are on the exam. So testing anxiety, hopefully, is at a minimum for people in this format in Zoom. Um, at this point, I, I would like to give you guys, uh, let's see if there's anybody wanting, yeah, there is somebody wants to join so let me get that uh, admit those people hopefully two more okay um if you have joined i see there's at least one person i just checked the enrollment numbers right before i logged on to zoom and sent you the invite um so every week by now you should know that that the procedure is the same as we did tonight uh we will have <clears throat> within 15 minutes 15 so maybe between 6.20 and 6.30, you should check your um, email uh, inbox for the Zoom invitation or you know meeting number and of course password and log on by seven. Okay, um, and then another thing is I don't mute my students. I think it's important for any student who cares to do, you don't have to say a word to get an A in this class, but if you so are so inclined, you can comment question, add information. Um, I just finished teaching, uh, I mean, I just taught last week, Wednesday, the class 1.1. I've taught that many times as well as this class uh, at the JC. And the point is that uh, that's a much bigger class. It's like 48 people. And I got their bios, I call them mini bios. And I will also remind you more than once tonight on this Zoom session, as well as send you an email. That's how I'm going to take role. I'm not going to do it every week. I mean, we're not in high school. It would take, even with what, 33 students that are enrolled, a lot of time out of valuable instruction time. So I'm going to ask you to send me a half a page is enough. Some people make it a full page, but certainly not more than three paragraphs about your background. So if you have a pen, you should have next to you now, as in each of these classes, paper and pen or a recording device, if you prefer to do it that way orally, um, to, to write notes, of course, for the slides and for any information. So here's the first information you might want to write down. What do I mean mini bio? I mean, keep it brief. Give me a few sentences each on three topics. The first one is where, okay, okay. I think we're back, I think we're back. Yeah, okay. we lost you. Yeah, well, now I hope you can hear me. Let's try. Perfect. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I know that, that's something I actually should start with. We're going to see over the course of 17 weeks, a few service interruptions, knock on wood when I say few. Last semester, there was only like three, maybe in the entire two classes I taught uh, all semester at the JC on Zoom. But if, God forbid, I'm going to knock on wood again, I have, I'm in my, I'm coming to you from my bedroom. I assume you're coming to me from rainy Sonoma, Marin, or Mendocino counties. Most of you live north of where I live. I'm 60 miles away, but that shouldn't affect the uh, connections. But whatever the reason, it doesn't matter. If there's an interruption that doesn't resolve itself like this one seems to have, and hopefully most of them will, uh, then I will start a new meeting. 
okay? And I'll send you the meeting info uh, within uh, five minutes. And you should check, but no, give yourself at least 10 minutes to see if that, if that happened, don't just disappear. Because if we can restart the class on another Zoom meeting, we don't want to lose a whole week. I mean, there's a lot of material to cover and, and we're here to learn about art and uh, not just, you know, talk into a computer. So I am going to, um, hopefully that, that actually hasn't happened. Watch now I'm, that one was brief, I hope, but let's get this back up. Um, okay, I can see you guys now. So, and I can see people moving. So I assume in some of the boxes. Anyway, the thing is, I don't know if it's a weather. I assume it's much windier and rainier up there. It's not exactly mild down here either. We're going to see flooding and all that. You know, let's hope it doesn't affect people's homes in the hillsides. But anyway, the point is, we can't do much about that except ask your patients as a teacher. I'm talking about. And that would mean give it at least 10 minutes to see if you get completely uh, booted out or you see that I'm, I met me, the instructor, my, you know, feed is not uh, visible or audible. Uh, first, give it a couple minutes. It, it can restore itself like it did, usually less than a minute. Um, but if it doesn't, then uh, after, oh, say five minutes at least, at the, at the most, I mean, I will then restart uh, a new meeting in which I will send you all the same way I just did the new meeting info. And so you should try to log on. And if you haven't seen that within 10 minutes is the bottom line. It's your right to say, sorry, that night isn't happening. And then maybe I still managed to get up and running in which case you can check on Friday for the recording. Or if any of you lose your own connections, that's gonna happen to some of you individually, obviously. It's already happened to my first class last week to two or three people. Uh, then uh, don't panic because unless <laughs> uh, there is uh, no alternative, if I can finish the lecture, it will be posted along with every lecture uh, at the end of the week by 7 p.m. on that Friday. Okay, so you can always check for it then in case you have to, or some emergency arises and you can't finish attending. But here's the point about attending. I've said this to all my classes. Uh, back when I taught in person, this is my 24th year of teaching at the JC. Uh, let's get this full screen again. My, you know, this is the most I've ever seen for, yeah, we have somebody wanting to admit. So like I said, I need to just pause to do that. Hopefully that took care of that uh, late arrival. Okay. Uh, yes, please. Questions? Anytime. Don't worry about interrupting. You can either do it by chat or you can ask me. For, somebody had a question? Anybody? Okay. I, I don't know why there are more interruptions tonight than I've seen uh, in any uh, previous class. I have no idea why, but let's just hope that that's a, a temporary condition. Okay. Resuming where we left off. Resuming. Uh, no, that wasn't deliberate. This, this is going to be a, a fun class for those of you who, who actually are able to watch it live. Why? Like I said, you don't need to say a single word to get an A in this class. Uh, if you prefer to remain silent or mute yourself, but I won't mute you. And if you choose to ask questions or even, you know, uh, slightly disagree, I'm, I'm not uh, pedantic is the word, right? Uh, thin skinned about that. I mean, when I was at UC Berkeley, my favorite professors were the ones who welcomed students to interact uh, during the lectures or at least in small groups, which this would qualify as. Now, not the big lecture hall, but even there sometimes with 300 students in a lecture hall, there would be some professors who would. And then the ones that I never felt very comfortable with were the ones that said, don't bother me with questions. I don't like that attitude. So I encourage you, if you have any comment, question, or issue you need, uh, hopefully if it's relevant to the topic we're discussing at that moment. Feel Well, I guess it's gonna be that kind of a night. So all I can do is ask you all, you've been patient already uh, beyond what most people would expect to have to do with the first class. But this is what we have to deal with because obviously we're not out of the woods uh, with the pandemic. By the way, I was about to tell you guys some false information and it wasn't fake news. It was just the media not checking their facts. They were saying last night on local uh, uh, KCBS is a CBS affiliate on the evening news, uh, San Francisco, 11 p.m., that the museums were opening again. Uh uh, no, they're not. They're not. It's not safe yet. In fact, uh, some people think we shouldn't have had this, you know, uh, end to the um, uh, stay at home order so soon, but that's a matter of, you know, 
separate issue. So I'm just saying that there will be things that will come up and, and we can't control them. But you're going to have, I want to assure you this, you're all going to have so many opportunities for extra credit or to make things up that you should all be able to get if you attend the vast majority, let's say 80 to 90% of all these Zoom lectures, and hopefully don't have too many interruptions. Uh, those are the students that usually get an A in my classes, well, actually in person or on Zoom. So if you don't, you won't have the chance to interact, ask questions, and, and experience the, uh, the slides and the art and the discussions in real time. So I recommend, I urge you all to try and attend as many lectures as you can in real time. Okay, um, the uh, mini bios, I wasn't, I think I got interrupted, didn't I? When I was saying, there are three things that I'm asking you to write. The, this is just for me to take role and see who is not in the class after two weeks. It's not my rule. The college has, you. some of you know, it's called a census. And we're supposed to drop students who are quote, no shows. Well, how do we do that when we're not meeting in person? This is how I do it. You have two weeks but don't wait that long. Try to do it in the next day or two before, let's say, the, the weekend to send me to my email, which is on the top of all the hand or the two main handouts, but I'll give it to you again. All assignments, including this mini bio, should be sent to me at my AOL uh, email. It's easier for me to navigate. Don't ask me why. Some of you will find that hard to believe. <laughs> then Outlook. Outlook is cumbersome and there are lots of spam on that, more than I get on my AOL, way more. So for me and my readers who help me with grading, it's, it's required for you to send, if you want us to get your work and give you credit or any extra credit uh, submissions by PDF, this is the college's rule, right? All of us teachers have to send you docs on PDF format so you can open them and vice versa. You should send all assignments to us that way. And please do it through my, AOL, it's Mark, I'll say it again slowly. M-A-R-K-W, Mark W at AOL.com. I've had that since 1996 and I know that's before some of you were born, right? Um, that's been my handle. People have contacted me from around the world with that because they know it hasn't changed. Okay, so your mini bio to finish up on that. The three things, first, where have you lived and worked? Not every single place if you've traveled, like I've been to 40, more than 40 countries. So you're gonna see some evidence of that with some of my slides. Uh, some, some sites that are not part of the syllabus, just for your own enjoyment or interest, where you don't need to take notes and I'll tell you when those happen, they're interspersed throughout the lectures. Uh, okay, but if you've traveled outside, let's say California anyway, uh, let me know that. And then also, where have you worked? Uh, if you, you know, work outside the Bay Area or you're from a different country. Here we go again. Okay. My apologies, but I have no control over that. Okay. So the second thing is um, your uh, actual work experience. You know, what, what are you, or, or, or school and work. What are you studying or where, where have you gone to school other than the JC? A or B, what work, major work experience do you have? And finally, the last one should be the shortest. Just what, what is your background relating to art? Although some of you are artists, so you may want to write a full paragraph. You know, do you have any artistic talents that you've used or have you studied art or, you know, seen it in, in, in uh, real, real life? Uh, your interest in this class, in other words, what, uh, you know, I want to see how you are, um, you know, going to bring, what, not how, what are you bringing to our discussions when and if you choose to participate or just to writing the papers, uh, you know, and uh, my experience, I've taught at uh, 12 colleges, two universities, Sonoma State and San Francisco State, and 10 JCs, including this one, and my favorite college has always been this JC, because there's been so many uh, differences and varieties of backgrounds, of experience, people from all around the world. And I, in my ex experience, this is not hyperbole. The, the average maturity level of the students, even the youngest ones at this JC is above even some of the ones I taught at UC Berkeley Extension, uh, where I try something slightly different that might help out. I'm going to go to the speaker view. Maybe that will make a difference. Let's see. Oh, why is it muting? Okay, let's try this. Here we go over there. Speaker view. Uh, 
All right. Can you guys hear me? Um, inconsistently, but right yeah, now, I yeah. know. I, I'm frustrated as all H-E double hockey sticks with this. As of right now, you're clear, though, so. Thank you. Thank you. That's helpful to know. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Okay, I'll say it again. The bio thing is really briefly recap because we want to keep moving. Three things. First, where you have lived and traveled, okay? Just a couple examples, anywhere outside California. Number two, your work and or educational experience. And three, your experience with art. In other words, is yeah, that's helpful if you guys do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. for uh, There again, that's one reason I like teaching at this college because uh, students do step up when it helps your fellow students. So thank you for that. Okay, so uh, I hope that's clear, but you know what? I'm gonna send you all an email tomorrow, let's just say, so that you can you know take time and if you need to think about this. But if you can get it done by, uh, we're gonna take a 20 minute, or no, 15 minutes. So we wanna end a little early each night. Normally we'll go to eight, take a break 15 minutes and end around um, 9.15, 9.20, okay? Yeah, thanks. So that means we hopefully don't have to go the full three hours. But during the break, if you have time to write a mini bio and send it to Mark, M-A-R-K-W at AOL, uh, that'd be great, but you don't have to do it tonight and give it some thought. As long as I get them by the end of the second week, that's when I am required to drop people I haven't heard from. And this is my way of doing that. So I will remind you more than once, both tonight by email, and at least these are brief. <laughs> now it's doing that again. <laughs> okay, let's go to <laughs> yeah, see some sardonic smiles. I know this is the worst I've ever seen it. <laughs> it seems like whenever you start to say something important, yeah, like super important, yeah, it cuts you cool. out. But when we're just talking, I, it doesn't. Yeah, I think it's the the Greek gods. Uh, that's what one of my students said last week when we got cut off only, but at the end, so we only missed one slide after almost two and a half hours, but it's, it's happening more often this semester. I, I don't know if it's a weather. Anyway, let's try this speaker view again, I think, because I'm going to be holding up some things for you to see now, and that might help <laughs> if we can get, hey, come on, come on, speaker view. Okay, that was you then. Your visual is fine. It's just your, your yeah, speaking. Yeah, thanks for, for telling me, because it's hard to know at this end. All right, so again, if you didn't get everything, one of your fellow students, I, I think you all saw that uh, through the chat option has told you, but I will send you an email tomorrow about what to write and your mini bios. It'd be great if you can get to them by the weekend or before the weekend, uh, but if not, certainly by next week and I'll remind you. Okay, now um, I should give you a little background and uh, I should say something about the fact that this I don't mind being upfront and, and very, very transparent is the word they like to use in national press coverage of what. <laughs> so. You're back. Yeah, well, once again, it's just, let's try and get this uh, speaker view. My internet connection is unstable. You know what, my computer's charged. I made sure of that. And it was working fine until, <laughs> you know, obviously we just, the reason is I want to show you something. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, in a couple minutes, but first I want to say something about uh, the three books. You do need Stockstead, just volume two for this class. And you do need uh, the Gill book, but I know you can rent them. My One of my readers, the one I've worked with the longest, who already finished her AA and is at Sonoma State now and still grading. Great, <laughs> I'm grateful for that. She's, she's a you know, very uh, uh, savvy student who knows how to you know, read papers from fellow students. I'll be grading uh, at least one paper from each of you every uh, you know other paper so there's two papers and the same with the exams so plus I review every reader's work I don't just blindly enter them in my grade roster so you 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 know that I have input I have checked but anyway the point is that she was saying you can rent the textbooks and save a lot of money I didn't even know that until she told me that during the break this uh, holiday break so check on Amazon 
uh, if you can rent. I don't know if you can rent Stockstead. I think you can through the student bookstore. Uh, I heard from another student that you could, but I don't know the procedure. So check with either or both uh, and whichever is cheaper. Obviously, I hate the fact that textbooks are so out. Here we go again. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Or were we so rudely interrupted? I think it's the Greek gods playing games with us. Um, the third book, you can wait. I sent you an email about it. It's the one I wrote about the first woman architect in American history and one of the great uh, architects of all time. She outdid Frank Lloyd Wright. And I'll bet a few of you have been to Hearst Castle, which is where this photo is. It's of the uh, pool, the indoor pool at Hearst Castle. She designed the entire compound. It's not just one building. She did 720 buildings. Frank Lloyd Wright only did 520 or so. She outdid him by about 200 buildings. And she had a shorter career because it took her longer to get accepted being a woman in the turn of the 19th century, about 1900 now, that far back. An amazing woman, an inspiration. But rather than have you think, you know, you're gonna be tested on a bunch of different buildings, it's just three chapters in that book, which you can wait to buy till after the midterm. We won't get to that part of the syllabus, 20th century architecture and her buildings until uh, about the, I think it's the 12th or 14th week. Okay, one more new admission. Okay, um, so I just wanna mention that. By the way, if you don't know, the one thing that will, another th advantage of having uh, this book when you you know are ready to it could be now you can find it for twenty dollars on Amazon I just checked that's pretty reasonable right it's less than the bookstore but this book bookstore has it for thirty which is also for a textbook pretty reasonable anyway there are four of her houses in Petaluma and I'm going to show you the images of them let's uh, work right up to where yeah uh, I can show you those yeah. Here's the one, if you know Petaluma, downtown, there used to be a cartoon, some of you know, Bullwinkle and Rocky, anybody ever seen that? Fractured fairy tales, and we're having a fractured lecture experience. I'm so sorry about this. <laughs> nothing, right. nothing to do with me uh, or any choice I have. Anyway, this house is one example of, for extra credit, all you have to do is take four photos of the exterior, you know, one full shot and maybe two details. I don't expect you to go inside them like you would if we were in a normal time frame. And then here are the other three. So they're all within a mile of each other in Petaluma. And she designed each one as a different style and a different set of uh, architectural principles. She was the most versatile architect I've ever seen. And that's my degree, my background. So I just give you a little bit about my background, keep it brief. And then I'm going to ask you to do that with your mini files. Um, I don't have a PhD. So just full disclosure. I do have three uh, postgraduate degrees, a master's degree, which my thesis was on Julia Morgan and her mentor, Bernard Maybeck, who created the Palace of Fine Arts. So now it's show and tell portion of the class, but this is relevant because some of you may want to write a paper about one of the buildings that are in the Bay Area, or it don't have to be in the Bay Area, it could be anywhere as, as uh, your, uh, either one of your first or second papers. So if you don't know San Francisco, most of you have been to this place, I'll bet. The Palace of Fine Arts is of course uh, a building that's in every movie. I'm looking for the best photo of it. Practically every movie that was ever filmed in San Francisco has, it. here we go, here we go, yeah. Um, and it is his most famous work, but it's not, necessarily his best. His best are buildings that are in uh, there. Here we go. This just takes a while. I have to back away from the screen. This is a <laughs> frustrating. I'll do this over again. Here we go. All right. If you don't know, this is uh, a National Historic Landmark. Now you do. It's also the only building left from the 1915 San Francisco World's Fair. So it's over 100 years old. It's the only building people love so much, they insisted on saving it. And I swear there, I listed it in here in this book. This is not something you have to buy or even look at. But if you choose to, it's on reserve at both the campus libraries. And of course, it's not an ebook, So you could do the curbside pickup. I double checked to make sure that was the case. And then my third book, the one I did most recently about, well, now it's almost six years ago, uh, 
is Frank Lloyd Wright on the West Coast. And this book has had the most, uh, as you could imagine, he's the one architect, I think, if anyone knows any American architects by name that most Americans have heard of. But you don't have to write a paper. I, I give this a lot of thought, even though that's my main degree and qualifications, why I was hired to teach here by Sarah Gill. There we go again. Unstable. OK, it doesn't mean I, I'm booted off yet. Hopefully another late arrival. OK, um, the point is that I can help you direct. I can't. I'm not going to help you with like an extra advantage. It wouldn't be fair. There's a, a class in which and all the JC classes I ever uh, have heard of have what's called an e uh, equal playing field, right? Level playing field. So you don't have an advantage over fellow students if you choose to write a book, um, a book, <laughs> a paper about our. Yeah, all right. Let's... Uh, it's just yeah. We're all just comment. Yeah, I know. It's just. So... Okay, just making sure. Uh, let's see. It might just be the weather. It, it is. I don't know where you are, but it I is think it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've actually heard some very, very light rumbling of uh, thunder. Have you guys heard that up there? Yeah, it's running. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I heard too. My lights flickered twice. So. Yeah, I, I think we got that. Well, I tell you what. I I can't thank you guys enough. Let's just bull through this because I can't believe it'll be like this weather every week. And last week we had normal weather. You remember how warm it was? And and we had uh, no interruptions. Just just a few of those. You know, your internet connection is is weak, but it didn't boot us out. I guess so we'll just keep looking. going, and I'll repeat things if you need me to. Okay. The point is that uh, you could. I will create a new. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, down here there was something over the hills. I guess East Bay Hills, and it was just very mild and, and far away. So who knows? Whatever. Let's let's focus on the on what you can do if you choose to on your papers. You can write about any work of art except your own. That'd be cheating because you surely know the meaning of the works of art you created. So you do have to do some research. We'll get to that three weeks. It's not due for six weeks. So three weeks from from now or two weeks from tonight, the third night, I will tell you how to write your papers and give you a handout. So you won't have any questions about what's required of you to uh, do a, a good job on your papers. Uh, but if you choose to write about a, a building, a work of architecture on either of the first or second paper, I will have a new handout. I've just decided to create it since I've added this book for the first time, this Julie Morgan book as a required text at a, a fairly reasonable. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Boy, it would be nice to give us little 10 minute snippets, right? Instead of three. Okay. So the point is that I can give you uh, helpful information. Uh, that's all. It's, it just points you in the right direction on how to uh, write a, an architecture paper as opposed to one on sculpture or painting, which most of you probably will choose, or photography. Any uh, visual art is, is uh, including crafts. I, I had someone write one of the best papers I ever read on an in and out burger, not the sandwich, <laughs> the restaurant, the architecture, who designed those things with those distinctive colors? 1947, that, that's before McDonald's. I didn't know that. They were older than McDonald's. Anyway, this was a great paper. I mean, I've had people write papers on graffiti but that's harder to research. So I would kind of shy away, unless it's Banksy, you know, the guy from England, everybody knows, right? Does a stenciled graffiti imagery uh, with you see a one or two word message, maybe three, uh, th those kind of well-known uh, graffiti artists, maybe you can find research on, but it should probably be something that, you know, you can find information before you start your paper uh, online or in any other uh, published source. Um, okay, so the thing is with my back. <laughs> okay. Hello.
Um, Mark, I think you're Your muted. Your microphone's muted. Yeah, everyone's mute. <laughs> Bottom left hand corner. Is that working now? I just unmuted, I thought myself. Can you guys hear me? Okay. All right. I hit, yeah, I, at the bottom left hand corner, I uh, took off the muted, you know, symbol. Can you guys hear me? Wow. Now it says I'm using my audio, so it ought you ought to be able to hear me. We can hear you. Oh, good. Wow. Uh, you know, this is one of those endurance experiences where technology. Yeah, yeah. It ain't high tech grand. Who said that? Somebody in some movie somewhere. Uh, but it's what we have to work with. So I'm going to say this. It can't be. Oh, no, I'm not. Uh, the Greek gods are really punish us all. It's unlikely to be this way every week. But uh, if worse comes to worse, I may end up just, I don't want to do this, though, just recording in my own time some of the lectures. If, if it this happens, like, you know, two or three more times, maybe because the weather isn't likely to be you know well it should be soon <laughs> spring is coming we hope and everyone will be better off we hope with the vaccine and all that good stuff all right so let's let's just say a cut to the chase about my background so i have three degrees a master's degree in uh history which my thesis was about julia morgan and bernard maybeck the man who was her mentor he taught her and that's one of the two books for three i held up for you he was her instructor she was his best student and he was the one that encouraged her to become the first woman architect in american history to have her own office yeah okay and then the only other thing to mention is that uh I do write op-eds every so often, and two of them were published during the elections. I'm not going to get partisan. Don't worry. This is not a political science class. But we can express our views you know, outside of the classroom and or in the classroom if the classes about politics or referred events. So since it's not, I won't get partisan. But I'll just say I wrote a couple of op-eds, and here is what one of them was. <laughs> It was in your local paper because the editor knows me. For years, they've reviewed the books I just held up. They've reviewed them. Um, I always have to move on. It was about the 1876 election. And if you took American history and you covered that period, I'll bet you know what happened. That was a blatant steal um, by, well, it happened to me. It's a fact. I'm not getting partisan. It was a Republican candidate who lost both the Electoral College and the popular vote, but he somehow, Hayes was his last name, got into the White House because of a steal. So I was talking about the possibility of that before the election, and it was published the weekend before uh, the actual election. And then guess what? The Wall Street Journal published a piece, my wife subscribed to that, um, saying the same thing. <laughs> Will 2020 be like 1876? And we saw, luckily this time, things didn't go the same way. I'll just leave it at that. So every so often, if I have a piece in one of the uh, Bay Area newspapers, you can always access them online, uh, you'll get extra credit if you choose to download that and for <laughs> okay, I hope you can hear me now, all right? Let's just try and go through this as quick as can, because this is very important for all of you. Have this handout next to you, the course grading policies. I've already covered some of it, but just to clarify, the grading is not on a curve in this class. Uh, it's a straight percentage. So there are 400 points possible. All of the uh, assignments, the two papers and the two and when I say short, I said short here. Short paper means two to five pages. You don't have to, please don't write 10 pages or even seven or eight. Uh, that's way longer than you need to get an A, two to five pages. So there's two of those, they're each worth 100. And then the tests are both worth 100. And the final is not cumulative. I, I think you all know what that means. You can forget all the stuff you had to study before the midterm once you finish the midterm. 
only the final only covers everything after the midterm. The grading, I don't think I need to explain too much. If you're looking at this, it's it's pretty percentages, right? 90% and above is an A, 80 to 89 to B, 70 to 79 to C, and so on. However, if you're taking it credit, non-credit, or is it pass, not pass now, I think, you do need 70% of the total points, meaning 280 to get the credit, to get the units. So anytime you can email me at any point during the semester, not yet, it's too early, but once the first assignments are turned in about any question you have about grades, including what points you have, the total points. Here we go again. All right. So in other words, if you were uh, in some people do get to this point right before the final, you had 280 points already, including extra credit. We're going to talk about that and then we'll get to uh, tonight's first main topic, which is what is art. And of course, we'll have a fractured discussion, but I think we can get through that pretty easy because you won't have to take notes. Then we'll take a break. Hold our breath. Hopefully this stuff settles down. And after the break, we are going to look at a few slides, God willing, or, or the force, <laughs> the higher power, or the universe, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the Zoom, great Zoom God, hopefully will give us a break. Okay, so uh, in other words, if you were at that point of 280 points, and I, I can tell you that right before the test, you wouldn't have to take the final. It is not very common, but it does happen. I already said attendance is going to be done right, just with these mini bios. Okay, um, I don't really have office hours, but you can contact me by email anytime during the semester, but give me 24 hours, to 24 to 48 hours. I mean, if it's on a weekend, that's my family time, but I'll get back to you by Sunday if you contact me on Friday night or Saturday morning, uh, or if not sooner. So that's how my office hours are. You can, you can uh, just email me or at the end of each class, I will stick around <laughs> again, God, uh, the powers of the be willing and stick around for as long as need be to answer your questions once everyone is, you know, finished taking notes. And I'll say that, okay, we're done now with the lecture. You can take off or if you have questions, I'll stick around till I've answered them all. Okay, extra credit. This is very valuable. Now, how can you go to an art museum? Not now. This may not be an option. I have no control. I'm guessing by April, they'll open a couple exhibits. Uh, who knows? There's one on Van Gogh coming up called Immersive Van Gogh. That should be a really interesting one because it's his uh, images and or whole paintings of his projected huge, larger than, than life, not just larger than the original painting on the walls. Uh, and I think ceiling of, I think it's the, it might be the Museum of Modern Art. Anyway, you'll, you'll know, but I'll tell you about it. And you could uh, then give me a ticket stub or proof that you went to that exhibit. And I, what you do when you're there, you don't have to write about it, is your business. I just need to know you actually went to a certain uh, exhibit at a certain time during the semester and proof of the fact that you paid to get in, unless it's a free night, and then you'll need a docent to initial you know, something to prove you were there physically. And just for attending, for whatever length of time, any art museum anywhere in the Bay, greater Bay Area, you get 10 points. You can do each of these options twice, any of these two times. An architecture site, I just said that, but I'll say it again. What you need is to take photographs of the exterior color, please, and then send them to me as a PDF that I can open and put your name. Of course, don't forget which class you're in. I have, you know, obviously a lot of students in different classes. So, you know, the section, uh, art, right, 1.2, the name of the building and your name. That's all you have to give me uh, with the four color photos, and you'll get uh, 10 points for that. That's option number two. Number three, email me a PDF. Please don't give me, well, sometimes I can open screen. Uh, okay. That one I'm going to leave to those who are, because you already covered that, and I'll send you an email about it. If you still have questions about the bio, you can look for an email before six o'clock on Thursday that'll summarize that. Yes, that's correct. That's how role will be taken. So you have uh, until the end of the second week to send me uh, a brief bio. And if you're not sure what it's about, let's not go back the third time in a row. I will send you an email if you, if you just joined late, or you can check with your fellow students 
if they want to at the break do a chat one of you was helpful enough to do it a little while ago about what is meant to be covered in those mini bios okay let's finish up this uh overview of the requirements for the course oh you can uh send me up to four articles 20 points in other words is the maximum for any each of these categories uh, because that's a that's an easy one off the internet about any of the visual arts now some of you aren't sure what that means not dance not music those are performing arts so painting sculpture photography drawing and architecture those are the five visual arts that we cover in this class so any article it can't just be a paragraph it needs to be at least a full page and doesn't have to have a photo even uh and you just need to make sure of course you've attached your name and and the class you're in and then i'll be able to see that it fits the requirements and each of those is worth five points you can do up to four of those okay number four is a new feature since the zoom era started that i thought people might find more enjoyable and easy uh watching a feature film or a documentary sorry i'm reading off my paper uh, about an artist's life and career. There are so many good movies. Some of you know Frida, the one, gosh, now that movie's been out for over 12 years or something. Um, Salma Hayek, she just really nailed that role. Uh, I really thought I was watching Frida Kahlo as she went through her. Okay, at least the, at least the interrupts are getting shorter, <laughs> slightly. Okay, so, so that should be an easy. Documentaries, there are some short ones. Half an hour is not really that much. So at least the 60 minute uh, long documentary or feature films are always over 60 minutes about the uh, life of any artist. Uh, there's some good ones on the surviving. Picasso is a good one uh, with the guy who played uh, Hannibal Lecter. Why do I always forget his name? The English actor <laughs> who played Picasso to a T. And Picasso was not a very nice person. <laughs> it's more about his personal life, but it also shows him at work in his studio. So that's another one. There's so many. There's Van Gogh. I mean, there must be a dozen movies about his life. So any film, feature film, or documentary worth uh, longer, I mean, than 60 minutes, watch it and write a two-page summary of what you learned about that artist from that. Uh, that should be quite easy. That's worth 10 points. Now, walking tour of architecture, not likely. It could happen. We could get enough, you know, um, herd immunity uh, by by May, the end of this semester. Usually when I did these tours was the last week before the final. And I'd have as many, I had 48 students show up to one hours more than I could handle. Usually it was like half the class or something or from both classes. Uh, and you'd get 15 points for that. But uh, that that is not, uh, actually I said 20. That's not likely to be possible. So what's the maximum uh, uh, you can earn from any one. Okay, just have to bull through this. The maximum amount of extra credit you can earn, and then we'll do the last thing is the late policy. I have a very lenient late policy. Uh, I've been told for years by students and other teachers I'm too lenient, but I, I, I'll explain that in a minute. And then we'll be done with the course overview. And we will discuss briefly, if we're lucky without too many interruptions, uh, what is art? And I'm going to shock some of you with an example of a controversial art exhibit. And then you're welcome to comment or not if you don't want to about how you would have reacted to these controversial works of art. We'll do that right before the break. Okay. And then again, with the force willing, we, we'll see four slides, hopefully all four. Uh, and those you will need to take notes so don't disappear after the break. Okay. So the last option is to download either one or both of my two novels on Amazon Kindle. Now, why are those relevant? If they were just traditional novels about things that are not related to art, they wouldn't be. I had these reviewed by the Academic Senate, the Dean, and the Vice President of our college. And they all decided, yes, this was a reasonable option. You don't have to even think about it if you don't want. But if you want an easy 15 points, that's one. Uh, it's just one among many options, obviously, for extra credit. Um, you can download them from Amazon Kindle, and they are related to the topics of both to art. South Side Story, a novel Chicago in the 60s. Well, some of you know, Chicago is a pretty different place. Not like the Bay. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Just let's get through to the break. But I am going to take a consensus. I believe in that. 
you know, if a majority of you think it makes sense during the break for me to end this meeting, I don't think it'll make any difference if it's the weather or, or, or bandwidth. I don't, but we could try starting a new meeting, but it means you'd have to go back to check your email. So I don't know if it's worth that interruption and, and on a small chance it'll be less disruptions. But if you, if you think we should do that, I'll ask your opinions and try to get a consensus right at the start of the break. And if we could do that while I'm on break, I would have to send you the new uh, Zoom meeting info. We'll see. Okay, <laughs> as I was trying to say, th that novel, the first one about South Side Chicago, I wrote it, um, gosh, well, more than 20 years ago. And uh, I read it and it's been read to writers workshops and groups, you know, nothing special. It's, it's an ebook only as a, you know, Amazon Kindle is. And if you have Amazon Prime, it's free. And if not, it's like $2.99 or something. Uh, the point is that it has to do with how art influences people when they're growing up. My, both my parents were artists. They were talented artists. I don't have the visual arts skills. I can write and, and understand art from growing up with a, a mother and father who were both equally talented as, well, my mother was a sculptor and a painter. My father was a commercial artist and illustrator. Uh, and we starved <laughs> half my job. Plus which Chicago, the internet, so there we go again, sorry. Uh, it's the neighborhood Obama was from when he was elected president. It's that neighborhood, South Side of Chicago. It's very different than anything in the California at all. Uh, multicultural, yes. And we dealt with the civil rights movement. Some of you know the history of the early 60s. Obviously, I'm in, you can tell I'm at an age where I saw this happening. I mean, I heard Malcolm X speak, not inside a Muslim you know, black Muslim uh, temple, but they, their temple was in our neighborhood. And that's where he, he did most of his lectures when he wasn't uh, in Detroit, where their headquarters was. And so I got to hear on a broadcast. That, you know, so these kind of experiences are, are not unique, what we're going through now with racial justice and immigration issues and what we went through the last, we'll just say few years with various issues that you, you know, are all aware of. Uh, these all have, including hoarding, and panic buying, the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, if you don't know what that was, it's as close as this planet came to getting annihilated by nuclear weapons. We were really close to a nuclear war with the Russians. And Kennedy, thank heavens, he was president then, obviously I can remember him, kept his head, kept his cool, and we got through it. So what it was like to live through that, thinking you could die any day during a two week period where every day you woke up, you're like, is this the day we're gonna all be obliterated? I think you'd find that of some relevance for what you guys and you're mostly I assume or most of you are millennials in any case my daughter being a Gen Zer, she found it interesting and normally she wouldn't read anything I wrote I'm her dad but she did read that just for her own interest so that's worth 15 points if you download it and show me evidence of either an order form or the last chapter as a screenshot that will prove that you you know downloaded it that's worth 15 points the other one is now this one many of you will what how could they? the open house murders yes it's a murder mystery but it's not your typical one an offbeat San Francisco thriller set in the early 90s. That I wrote when I was a full-time realtor, I, before I got into teaching art history, which is what I prefer doing. Uh, I, I couldn't find any jobs anywhere. There's a recession, you may have heard that. There, there always seems to be every 10 years. So in the 90s, things were a little different. There was no internet. And it was the Russian mafia beginning to come into America. So this is a murder mystery set in about 20 different historical sites that you can use as extra credit options to go to for yourself to take photos or maybe as a, a topic for one of your papers because that's my background. So I made the main character who's being framed by the way but I don't wanna give away too much by both the Russian and Italian mafias in this story. Uh, I made the various scenes in which the, the dead bodies turn up and other uh, stressful events happen uh, in historically accurate descriptions of buildings all over the Bay Area. Uh, so that might be of some interest to a few of you and that's uh, worth 15 points. And then if you post a review, this is the last thing I'll say about extra credit for now, uh, that extra step, it could be two sentences, it could be negative or positive, whatever your honest opinion is, uh, then that would be worth 10 more points. So there, right there is 50 points and that's the maximum you can get Oh, thank you all. You guys are being really helpful for each other, I hope, and for us as a group. Okay, so let's just finish up this overview of the course policies with the late policy. I uh, do not 
uh, re, uh, take extra points off every week of papers late. My daughter's teacher's at Albany High. She's going to Albany High. Though we live in Berkeley, she got a special uh, <clears throat> admission back in third grade and has been in Albany School District ever since. Uh, she has teachers who won't either accept late work beyond a certain period or they just keep adding points off. I don't do that. I figure I'd rather have you take your time if you can't get it done on time. Now there is a, otherwise, if I had no points off, that'd be too lenient because then people would have no incentive to turn their papers in on time and there'd be chaos in terms of when they get graded. I want you to turn them in on time and get them off your plate and you get full credit for whatever you've earned with no points off. If it's less than a week late that I get the PDF in my email box, then it's only five points off. Wouldn't it be? Okay, so if you turn in anything one week or more, there we go, uh, seven days or more after the due date, it's 10 points off. That's one letter grade. So you could still get a B if you wrote an A quality paper. But there is, and it's not my rule, there is an exception. If you had a medical or family emergency during the week the paper was due, anytime that week, you just have to show me something in writing and then there's no points off. Okay, that, that's not my, that last thing is the, uh, the districts, the college policy. So it's pretty reasonable. And uh, I can tell you though, don't do this to yourselves. Anybody I hope who has any options to avoid doing this. Try not to wait till the last week to do both papers, right? Before final exams, it's, it's never a um, formula for a good grade. Uh, you might pass the class, but to get an A or a B, you pretty much need to take more time than just one night for each of the two papers. And not to mention, you need to have time to study for the uh, papers. I mean, the uh, exams, the midterm and the final. Okay. Any questions about anything I said before we get so rudely interrupted again? And now we're going to switch to about a 20 minute discussion. And then uh, um, hmm. it says unstable, but it, okay. You guys can still hear me. Okay. The point is that uh, at any point, feel free to chime in with any questions. Let's see, I see one chat thing, but I think we, I already saw that. Let's just see what that was. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, we will, partly because of the interruptions. Normally we will go, so you're gonna probably, that, that person I totally understand, yeah. Uh, my daughter, by the way, was adopted. Is oh. most of what you, um, just on like the syllabus? Yeah. What we're going to do is talk about the first four slides after the break. And if you miss that, you can catch it on YouTube by 7 p.m. on Friday. And it's the same for every week's lecture. Okay. All right. So the point is to have um, a brief discussion now. Well, 20 to 30 minutes, depending on, you know, A, interruptions and B, what questions you guys have. And then if we can, we'll end a little early, but I can't guarantee that we'll end more than five or 10 minutes early on any given. Uh, night. So it depends on, you know, we have some weeks more lectures, I mean, more slides uh, that lecture than, than, than others, as you can see, if you glance through the syllabus. So when we have our busier weeks, uh, we, we might end five minutes early or 10. Sometimes we can end 20 minutes early. Uh, but I do think we need a break. I know I do. I can't go two and a half to three hours without a break. Uh, uh, it's, it, and staring at a computer screen isn't the best thing for, you know, it's called computer headache for a reason. So hopefully none of you will have that happen. Uh, okay, so now we're switching to the last, before the break, the last new topic. And, and then after the break, don't forget, you will need to take notes. So you should have your paper and pen ready after a 15 minute break. Okay, so what is art? Well, rather than have you guys write down your definitions, I just told you to do the mini bio thing. And, you know, that's good enough for my understanding your backgrounds. So here's what uh, uh, we're gonna talk about. An actual exhibit, you could look it up yourselves and find articles about it, submit them, like I said, with the extra credit option, that would be worth five points. Uh, you could do up to four articles as long as they're not just a rehash of the same. I'm gonna use a little corny humor, which comes from having, my daughter is 18 this year. She's a senior in high school, as I was just saying. We adopted her from Russia when she was 22 months old. And so I understand about people needing to put kids to bed <laughs> at a certain hour uh, if you don't have anyone else to do that you know, or, or can't always do that. You can watch the remainder of the lecture on YouTube. Um, okay, so uh, this was an exhibit called Sensation. 
that was in New York City in 2000. Now, that's ancient history to many of you. Um, but the point is, it, it was uh, the most controversial art exhibit that had happened up till that time, at least, in New York City. New York City is pretty liberal. Right? I'm not talking about even politically, I'm talking about culturally. Obviously, it's multicultural to the extreme, as was Chicago. Uh, but Chicago was more segregated when I grew up, and I think it still is. I've been back there to visit, but uh, certain neighborhoods aren't. My neighborhood wasn't. When I grew up, it was totally multicultural. That's why Obama and Michelle and Barack chose to move there, and he ran for Senate from there uh, for his you know, first. And then headquarters, of course, for his uh, new library they're going to build in my old neighborhood, the presidential library for Obama. Um, anyway, the point is that there is... Uh, no surprise for some people when you hear the first part of what I'm going to say, that New York City welcomed th this controversial exhibit. It was in London first. You could look it up. It was just the title was one word, both the London version and the New York version. They were identical. It was Sensation. It was in London 99, and I think it opened late 99 and ran in. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling a little bit like uh, this is the kind of thing my daughter would have laughed at it now she'd roll her eyes at it this at this point in her life if anybody saw peewee's big adventure the movie when he holds up the pen and says why do i have this in my hand i feel like i say why is this happening i don't know <laughs> i'm sorry that's a classic line from <clears throat> peewee's first movie anyway <laughs> we have no exact control of this and you guys are being wonderful <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, we, we, what we're gonna talk about now for about 20 minutes is the two most controversial uh, exhibits, or I'm sorry, items, works of art in that exhibit. One was called Black Madonna. Now these are not the official names that the artists gave. These are what the media, you know, the nicknames, the media give that people knew them by because they caused these controversies. And guess who was mayor of New York in 2000? Rudy Giuliani. You may have seen him in the news. <laughs> especially in front of the White House on January 6th, right before the assault on the Capitol. Anyway, uh, he was at that time a popular mayor of New York. He, he definitely, you know, was, was reelected and people uh, mostly thought he was doing a good job. But he was also a devout Catholic and conservative. I was raised Catholic. I'm a lapsed Catholic, I guess you could say. So I understand some of these things. He objected to that exhibit and, and one other but the first one we'll talk about briefly, called Black Madonna. It was a Nigerian artist, uh, you know, African, right, but British citizen. He had been born in Nigeria, his parents moved to uh, London, and that's where he had his career. He's well known now, his works in museums all over the world, but he was just getting started then, or at least in this country, he wasn't known. So, that was an image of Mary, mother of Jesus. You don't have to know all the details, but you know, from the Bible, as an African woman. Uh, that wasn't the reason for the controversy, not in New York in 2000, like I just said, it was a very multicultural city and, and quite liberal culturally. And that's not what Giuliani objected to. It wasn't about the, her, her ethnic image, you know, or, or, or depiction. It was about the fact that several clumps of dried elephant dung were glued to her blue royal She's always called the queen of heaven in the Bible. Her royal blue robes, there's like four or five clumps of dried elephant dung. We're gonna see that slide at the end of this semester in our last, no, we're not, we don't go that far. My apologies, <laughs> you can look it up. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's right. We cut off things at about 1950. That was like, you know, 1996 or something he created. So what did Giuliani object to? He objected to the elephant dung. He called it disrespecting uh, one of the world's major religions, not just Catholicism, as some of you know, is not a religion. <laughs> it's a sect of a bigger group called Christianity, of course. So he was saying, you know, a third, which is true, about a third in New York is, is uh, either Catholic or Catholic and other Christian denominations. So he said, you're insulting a huge portion of our population with this image of uh, uh, the, you know, most sacred woman in the Bible. Uh, you have to take that work out. It's an insult. It shouldn't be in a museum that the city of New York pays for their budget. I think it was like a third to half of their budget came from the city uh, taxes. Well, guess what? The artist came from all the way from London and gave, I think it was a press conference, might have been just an interview, in which he explained why he did that. He said, I was raised Catholic. I'm still a practicing Catholic. 
It's not disrespectful. It's a traditional gesture of, uh, or symbol, I meant to say symbol, of the cycle of life. And I'm not going to start singing from the Disney Lion King, <clears throat> which my daughter watched like 20 times. Anyway, the point is that, that that was verifiable easily. If Giuliani had done his homework before he got all up in arms about that, he might have recognized that it wasn't intended as an insult. It's just a, tr a traditional uh, symbol of the cycle of life, which according to the Bible, uh, you, know, you have life if you believe in that, right? Life after death if you follow the teachings of her son, Jesus. So it wasn't disrespectful at all. So that controversy died down, but the other one, oh no, it got much worse as time went on and it caused a Supreme Court case. You could look it up, State of New York Supreme Court. Uh, ruling. It was called child molester. Maybe you get already why it was controversial. It was a giant image. Um, oh, it was a giant image of um, <clears throat> a woman who had been convicted not only of multiple torture murders of young children throughout Great Britain, but confessed to them and showed no remorse. In fact, the photo of her was a bunch of pixelated images, hundreds of them, of previous victims, child, you know, young children, we're talking like under 10, who had been murdered by previous child molesting murderers throughout Great Britain over the last like 50 years. And each of these was a little pixelated, um, okay, hey, we let this person in, uh, image of these children who had been, you know, tragically lost. And that got the attention of more than just Giuliani and conservatives and the Catholic Church in New York. It, it got some parents in that neighborhood. It was Brooklyn, which is, as you know, a section of New York, if you have ever been there. And it was the Brooklyn Museum of Art. And the other reason it was a controversy, that work of art caused more outcry than the so-called Black Madonna because of the K through eight grade school that was up the street or K through six, I think it was. And those kids were allowed into that exhibit. And some of them as young as five were having nightmares and their parents were coming and complaining to the museum staff or sending, there were emails in of course, 2000 emails in to complain either to the museum's directors or the council of arts or whatever they call it in New York that, that funds museums or even Giuliani personally. How dare you allow this to be you know, shown? My kids are having nightmares and bad dreams or the older brother of my littlest child has been using that image of the child molester to scare his, you know, there was no age limits, no, no restrictions. Anyone could walk in off the street. Okay, so the point is that there were several issues. Here's what I would like to encourage you, you don't have to, but hopefully a few of you will have some thoughts, some comments, some, some, some perspective on this, especially since we know there's at least one other parent there, if you care to comment, you, again, you don't have to. Uh, but I think this is, is something that can touch a lot of people's personal experience or touch on, uh, which is whether or not your parents, you have younger siblings, right? Or you worked with kids, or you plan to become a teacher or childcare or, 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 or later. I think you could see the reason there was some uh, upset among people that weren't even particularly conservative or not. I mean, they just, they were parents or they were, you know, some people in the neighborhood even who thought it wasn't appropriate to have an image of a smirking convicted multiple <laughs> child murderer as a work of quote art in a museum. So let me start with the first question, which is, does anybody have any thought about the use of the images that the artist did? I just said the, the image was giant. It was like 10 feet tall on the wall of one room of the museum. Pixel, you know, dozens of images of murdered children. Is there any objection or a potential problem or, or uh, ethical consideration with the artist using those pictures? Can anybody think of any? Well, maybe it's because it's wide open. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. Well, but uh, what, what about the uh, children's images and where they came from and what the artist did or didn't do to, to use them? I mean, obviously it's not illegal, but it doesn't sit right, you know? It's one of yeah, those that's interesting. Like, yeah, you, oh. right? a very good point. It, you already knew this because a lot of people say, wasn't that against the law? It's an invasion of privacy. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like, I don't know who that is now that's speaking, was that Morgan or I can, anyway, good point. It wasn't illegal, at least by British 
laws because if you've ever been to London and you look at their newspaper, don't look to page, turn to page three. There's all kinds of obscene photos. It just, there are much looser laws. So it wasn't against the law. And But the reason he gave to defend himself, the artist was asked to defend his use of those pictures. He said, oh, well, they were images from the newspapers. It was public domain. And even in this country, I think you're right. Uh, the person has just spoke up that it wouldn't have been against the law because it was something that people had seen when the kids first disappeared, their parents reported them missing and before they tragically found out what had happened to their kids. So he was on solid legal ground but ethically the pain he must have engendered during the london phase for at least for families that lived in london and heard maybe if they didn't go see it hey you know a picture of your dead son or daughter is on the wall of the museum and it was at the tate gallery which is their modern art museum in london and uh, people are staring at it and you know it's of course it, it would it would reopen old wounds so my feeling is that is right there enough of a reason for some people to object. But then the other issue is the age or I'm sorry, lack of age limits, which would be the fact that there was no attempt by the museum to have any restrictions. Anyone could enter from anywhere in you know, greater New York and see all of these, there were a lot of other controversial pieces, but this one got the most attention. Does anybody think there's an issue with that? With, you know, like little five-year-olds, uh, being dragged in by an older sibling or or a bully or who knows just on their own wandering in because they don't know you know th th there's no child care by the way there was no child care at that walked into a museum and and were exposed to that or saw that like that would for me um would just create so much like it just creates stuff in their heads that they don't need to see yet you know um so for me yeah that would be an issue um yeah Someone else has uh, me, me as me as well. I agree. Yeah. It's not a piece of art that I would say is meant to be displayed to children. It's a, I would put it in a classification of adult art meant to be seen by by people mature enough to be able to deal with the emotions that are elicited from such a profound and strong image. Yeah, good point. Well, well put too. Okay, so that would be what most museums might have thought about before they opened the exhibit and then left it, you know, uh, accessible to everybody. But they didn't. So here's what Giuliani did. Um, well, no, I'm sorry. There's one more issue. Can anybody think of any art forms that you all have access to uh, if you're over 18? <laughs> I think that's right, yeah. Um, in, in a current American society in the Bay Area, wherever you you know have lived before, that have age restrictions? Anybody can think of any forms, art forms that have age restrictions? I bet you can. <laughs> Hopefully this is just temporary. Okay, surely somebody can. Anybody think of any type of art, visual, not necessarily just stable or static imagery, I'm giving you a clue, that there are age restrictions about who can see that work of art. Uh oh, don't tell me you guys can't hear me now. Uh, I'm not muted. Can you guys hear me? <sighs> yeah, there we go. I, I, I've, I've got something. Um, what about um, pieces of art that are related to wartime spectacles, things like the thousand yard stare from, um, trying to remember exactly, um, Haley Lou, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, it was a little more about that. It, um, it basically depicts, um, the Mount, uh, Uber Global, um, Umer Global Mountain, if I'm remembering the name correctly, um, shrouded in dirt, and blood and battle. And um, oh, it's bad the Marines thing. going up to assault it, and there's this in the in the foreground. There's a U.S. Marine with this just blank. Oh yeah, I've heard about it. I guess I haven't seen it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. We had another one just a moment ago. I hope you guys can see it, which was a good one. We just saw on the chat uh, image at the bottom, at least in my screen, uh, which which is a good point. Um, can that person restate that or I can just pull it up? 
I think I can. Um, yeah, classes with models. I hadn't thought of that's a new one. That's a new one. I wasn't thinking of that. Okay, what what about other forms of entertainment that aren't only limited to museums? All right, say that again because I didn't hear that part. Sorry, that last comment. Go ahead. I said that I heard that 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 also includes you know you know television and video games. And yeah, especially... video games and movies. And exactly. Movies. Hey, PG-13, uh, PG-17, no one under 18. You know, this may surprise a few of you, but I can remember when Psycho, I'm talking about the Hitchcock movie, the classic movie, the one of the first ever to have a murder betrayed in real time in the movie as a scene in a movie. And they wouldn't allow people under 18. In the there was no laws back then. There was no standards. Just Hitchcock decided to do that. Um, I daughter. think the worst thing about the video games too yes. is they they say that they have this rating on them, but they're more accessible to young. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard that too. And well, but there's one other medium that has the same type of scenario when they're up for sale that you can walk into a store. Although nowadays it's hard to do the uh, thing. What other form of art? It's not a visual art. Is there, are there a, supposed to be age restrictions on? Anybody? No. Okay, so, sorry, I don't know if anybody said that one other major art form. Uh, if I tell you that it's not visual, oops. Someone I, said music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't, but someone did. I don't know who did. Yeah. There, so, you know, the bottom line is there are plenty of types of popular art d that are f available either for sale or viewing or listening throughout American society where there is a consensus and the Supreme Court ruled on this that individual uh, entities such as filmmakers or the associations of filmmakers uh, or music whatever they call themselves, I forget what it is, it's REI or something like that, association that produces, you know, CDs for uh, music uh, or, or various other or video games, they can, they can police themselves and it's not considered censorship. It's considered uh, conforming to a quote, community standard. There we go. That's what Nixon used to do. I saw him once, oh man, I don't know. Anyway, forget it. <laughs> yeah, up close and I wish I hadn't. I was in Washington and he was giving one of his, uh, I am not a crook lectures right before he resigned. <laughs> anyway, so what you see is, um, is that there are plenty of examples of communities or even whole organizations, uh, you know, cities, states, counties, whatever, accepting there's no national law. Now that might be considered overreach. Uh, of censorship. Some people propose that there should be, but I don't think anyone so far has really seriously tried to get one passed. <laughs> okay, just try to keep moving forward. As best. We're about to take a break in like three or four minutes. But to finish up, what did happen with this controversy? Okay, Giuliani was running for this U.S. Senate. Didn't make it. He was running against Hillary Clinton. As you may know, she won that election. He had to drop out after this controversy. It wasn't because of it. Here's what happened. It went to the New York State Supreme Court, the controversy about whether Giuliani had a right to say, which he did, to threaten the museum, I should say, not just say. He threatened with removing their city funding if they didn't take those two exhibits out and a few others that he didn't like. And the museum sued. And so the, here's what the cut to the chase, the State Supreme Court of New York had a, what I would consider a balanced uh, decision. They said, first to Giuliani, uh, back off. You can't tell a museum after they open an exhibit, they have to remove a certain work of art, one or any or any number, just because you don't like it or you think it's, it's, it's either obscene or in indecent or inappropriate. That is censorship. And that is a violation of the freedom of expression. And if you had cons been concerned about that, you could have objected when the museum, months before the exhibit opened, they had public hearings about what was gonna be in that exhibit, although of course they couldn't see the images from it. 
well, maybe slides at the museum presented, but there was open public meetings. <laughs> okay, we're gonna wrap this up in less than two minutes, but I am gonna suggest a possible solution. We'll have no way of knowing unless we try it, which is for me to send you a new invitation during the break. I think I might as well try. I mean, it may have no effect, but it can't hurt unless anyone's had a class with another teacher where you had similar times of uh, numbers, I mean, of interruptions, and they tried that and it didn't help. Anybody had that experience? Because I've never done that. Okay, let's try to wrap this up before we get interrupted again. So the so Supreme Court told Giuliani, you cannot do that after the fact. His response was, well, I'm busy. I'm the mayor of a city of eight and a half million. And then they said, yeah, but you could have sent someone from your office to that uh, board meeting of that museum. And they would have come back to you and said, here's what they're going to do with uh, New York taxpayers' money at this museum. He didn't do it. So anyway, they told him, it doesn't matter. It's too late. It's You have to give up on your effort to censor the museum uh, for individual works that you don't like. But then they said to the museum, you also have an obligation to the community and you didn't fulfill it, which is to give proper notice about the, the nature of the exhibit, as is the case with all these other mediums we just discussed, movies, video games, music, and have an age restriction. In New York State, the law is that uh, 18 is the uh, age for minimum age for being considered adult so from that point on the museum had a, a, a what's the word a partition around the entire exhibit you know and an entrance uh, at the entrance they posted a you know docent or guard what i was a guard i'm sure with a sign and the guard enforced it no one under 18 admitted without an adult accompanying them so that way parents could bring their younger kids if they felt like it teachers could bring high school or even younger students if they thought it was appropriate and of course the students wouldn't have to go see that exhibit and there was some kind of control i think the museum uh, i'm sorry the uh, state supreme court in new york got it right that seemed to be a balance and the last thing i'll say is can you guess what happened to that particular museum um, memberships and attendance after that exhibit became controversial, you can guess, it skyrocketed. It went up 500%. So they got a boon out of it. Maybe that was their plan all along because of the controversy and the publicity. It actually made it onto PBS, local news and newspapers, the whole country. It lasted for months because the exhibit was open for like eight or nine months. And yes, the guy that created the, the, um, the, the work called Child Molester sold it for about, I think it was half a million dollars. Who bought that and where did they put it? I'd like to know. But anyway, they had to, I don't know, scrape it. They couldn't scrape it. They had to take it off the wall. I'm sure they had a way of doing that uh, and, and sell it as a separate work after the exhibit closed. But it, in other words, I think it was a balanced decision. But there's the point I'm making is different people's standards are not going to always measure up or be the same about what is and isn't appropriate for art. And that's part of what we're going to talk about. In this class, we're going to talk about some of the most controversial art and why they were at that time and whether they still are. And your opinions, of course, are welcome both during class discussions and also on your papers. Okay, do people think it makes sense for me? To, I might as well take a consensus. I said I would to um, end this meeting temporarily, and then I won't go off and get my <laughs> cup of coffee or something. We have fifteen minute break coming up right now in one minute and try to start a new meeting. That means you all have to get to your email account and check for the meeting information. Do people think that makes sense to try that? Because if it doesn't make any difference, it's just a, a headache. Well, you've been all, all been so patient. Uh, no one's speaking up. I don't know if that's because you can't hear me. Uh, hmm. Okay, if, if I don't- can't, have, Yeah, sorry. It can't hurt to start over again. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so please, everybody, don't go away. You're going to have slides that you'll need to take notes. Plus, I'm going to tell you very concretely how to take your most effective notes and uh, so you can focus on what you need to, to know for the test. And uh, that's something you need to have, you know, before you proceed with the rest of this class. So check your email in the next 15 minutes, and I'll have a new meeting info for you to join. Let's start over and see if starting fresh helps. Okay. See you guys all in 15 minutes. All right.